What's up guys and welcome to today's video where we are going to be going over this new rig that I built with some of these cards that I just acquired in the last couple of weeks. So first, this is a little bit different of a rig than I normally build. Uh, as you can see, it has a frame and I normally don't build framed rigs like these. But I've been thinking to myself, man, when I need to expand out of my current facilities, which is going to happen here soon, I'm looking into warehousing space and building some places. And I've reached out and collaborated with a couple of other miners uh, across Canada and the US to see where maybe the best place for us to put everything and merge our efforts together to save on rent, uh, purchasing power with electricity, and maybe even getting a better facility. But that's besides the point. And when time comes for that, I'll keep you guys in the loop and I'll show you everything if something does come to fruition. But for now, I was thinking to myself, oh man, I should think a little bit more ahead. Maybe for stackability once I get the larger mining farm set up, I will need a better situational the Once I have the bigger farm set up, I'm gonna need a better solution than I've created with my normal mining rigs, which I've showed you in my how to build a mining rig video. Um, it's really cheap for me to build like that. The only problem is scalability kind of sucks. You can't go vertical. It's only horizontal. And I'm sure there's some racks that I could purchase that would allow me to go vertical. But I was just thinking to myself, you know, it's going to be a lot easier. Granted, these are way more expensive. Now, I'm going to go through this setup with you guys and show you what I've built and what I have and all the parts and everything. And I'll make sure to put those down in the description below. That way you guys can see what I have. And if you want to go ahead and purchase some of these items, the links will be there for you. So first things first, this case is a King Win uh, six to eight card stackable frame. So you can support eight graphics cards in this with no problem. It currently only has six graphics cards and we'll go into that later. But I have a bunch of fans set up here so it has some nice airflow going across the top of the cards, which I will turn this around and show you. But these fans right here that I'm using are the Noctua Redux fans. And, oh, sorry about that. So these are the Noctua Redux fans. Now, they are a little bit pricey for fans. I think they're about $12 to $15 a piece, where I know some people have been able to get $20 for six fans, but they're the No Name, no name China brand. Now, the reason I went with these Noctuas is because for one, they put out a decent amount of airflow. Two, they're Noctua fans. I have um, used them in the past and when building computers and things like that, I know these fans, they're gonna last forever. I'm not gonna have any problems with them. And that's why I chose these over some of the other fans. Now, I could have gotten fans that pushed more air, but these are really quiet fans already and they push a decent amount of air. I don't have any problems with them. Uh, they run at about 25.1 decibels of noise and it looks here like they're, yeah, 1700 RPM PWM fans. So they do push a decent amount of air just by themselves. Now for this build, I've elected to use the same MSI board that I have in the other mining rig, and that'll be down, all these parts will be down in the description below. But it's a six port MSI board. It has six PCI ports. Not all of them are full PCI. I believe this only has two full PCI 16 times slots, but that doesn't really matter for me. This is an only an eight card supported rig. So six is perfectly fine. I'll use the adapter that I have to turn one of the 16 times ports into a 4X port and we'll fill it up like that. But for now, I only have six cards in here. I also am using 
some Corsair Vengeance RAM that I have in here, usually pretty good RAM and it was on the more affordable side. If you want to get something cheaper, you definitely can get something cheaper and I'll link it down below, but I won't be recommending it. And the only reason for that is, well, I don't have time to mess with RAM if something's broken, so I want something reliable. Now, the next thing that I used is these uh, power supplies. These are both from Parallel Miner. They are 750 watt power supplies. Now, when I go ahead and put eight cards in here, I'm not going to want to use the 750 watt power supplies, especially because I currently have a 3070 Ti and a 3080 in here. And I don't want to push the power on this rig. If you push it, the power supplies get loud. And uh, I also want to make sure that there's headroom for any reasons of like expansion and they run quieter, cooler, et cetera, et cetera. Less chance of failure from what I've noticed. Um, so those will be replaced. I did get them on sale uh, from parallelminer.com. They had a sale, I don't know, a couple weeks ago and I just grabbed them. So I had them laying around. I did order two of the 1200 watt server power supplies and those are on the way. Uh, but just as a heads up, if you're not using uh, 220, um, they only do 900 watts. So just keep that in mind. I believe they do say that on the website. That'd be more than enough for this rig once I add the other cards. Uh, something special that I did on this rig that I didn't do on the other rigs as you can see, I only have two server power supplies. I don't have any ATX power supplies. So how am I powering the motherboard? Well, it actually comes with, and you can't really see it, but I'll, I'll put a picture right up here. There is a breakout board from Parallel Miner, and it is called the ZX, ZSX Amp. Now, this is a really awesome breakout board. The downside of this breakout board is it's a little bit pricey, but if you want to make everything more compact and you want to have less issues, well, less points of failure, this thing is great. It has a 24 port and also a, uh, a four pin for the CPU. I believe it comes out as an eight pin. And yeah, so it, it splits into an eight pin. So you have more than enough power for your CPUs if you use higher end CPUs. So you don't have to worry about that. But another cool thing is it also shows the current and the voltage. And what that means is you can take the amperage and the voltage that the power supply is using and multiply them together to figure out the watts. So that's just awesome. I can see how many watts are on the power supply and how much the entire rig is using. Um, this power supply doesn't have that breakout board, unfortunately, uh, just because I only had one of them laying around and I just ordered it when these things were on sale, but I am ordering another one and I'm going to use it in conjunction with this one. They are tied together. So you turn one on, it turns both power supplies on. Now, why am I going to use two of these? Well, I'm going to use two because I'm going to be able to, like I said, check out how much wattage I'm pulling from the entire machine when I add both power supplies together. So that is very handy, very convenient. Um, I don't have to use the little remote start uh, Wi-Fi outlets to tell me. Now those have been giving me decent readings, but this is gonna be way better. It's literally showing me exactly what the power supply is pulling. So if I add them together, no problems. So you can see we have eight fans, I believe, or seven fans uh, running across here. This rig comes with a little like, piece of plastic here that you can mount the solid state uh, vertically on. So that's kind of nice. The one thing that I wish I saw more frequent in rigs is these server power supplies. I wish some of the rigs would come for mounting brackets for them. And I've been thinking about 3D printing some for myself. So maybe when I 3D print them, it won't be an issue, but it would just be way more convenient if they did. Instead, they give me two ATX power supply brackets, which cool, but uh, we're a server supply shop here. 
just because they're cheaper, more affordable, and more reliable. They're meant to run 24 seven. So let's turn around the rig and I'll show you what we have going on here. All right, so here we have all of the graphics cards in this rig. So I'm just gonna adjust the camera. This is the rig. It currently has six graphics cards. I have two of the Asus ROG Strix 3060s. I have two of the Founders 30, uh, 3060 Ti's, one of the 3070 Ti, and one of the Plain 3080. Now, why do I have a mix of random cards when normally my rigs are all the same card? Well, the big reason for that is honestly, I couldn't find matching cards. And as you all know, finding graphics cards is pretty difficult. So I just got whatever I could find. One of those just happened to be this 3070 Ti Founders Edition, a card that people have not been able to get, but miraculously, I was able to get this thing. So don't worry, there's gonna be some hash rates and everything for this Founders Edition card in a, a video that's gonna be coming out later. Uh, so here I have my 3080, it's separated from the other cards to keep it a little bit cooler. That way we have more airflow. I even added an extra little heat sink on the side that you can't really see. Uh, it's a solid state heat sink. Just slapped it on the side to keep the VRMs a little cooler. This is the 3070 Ti. These are the 3060 Ti's. And then here I have the Asus ROG 3060s. Now, in terms of hash rate, I'll just give a quick rundown of what these cards are hashing for Ethereum and then maybe Ravencoin also. So this 3080 right now can get about 98 mega hash. Uh, anything higher, I can, I can push it to 104 mega hash. The problem is the VRMs will die because it, it gets to like 112, I think, if I push it. So I don't push it, I wanna keep the VRMs cool. That way the card lasts longer and if I ever need to use it, personally or sell it, it's still a good card. I like to make sure the cards are taken care of. So I run it um, at about 98 mega hash and it stays nice at like 98 degrees. I did change out the thermal pads on this to help though. So this is the 3070 Ti. It only gets 40 mega hash on Ethereum. Kind of sucks uh, in terms of price to performance. But I just had to buy this card, that way I can review it for you guys and let you know how it's doing. So make sure to stay tuned for that one. But it's actually pretty good for Ravencoin, but we'll circle back. These two 3060 Ti's do the normal 60 mega hash. Uh, I believe one does 61 and the other is like 60.5, so nothing crazy about those. Now these two bad boys, these 3060s from ASUS, the Strix editions, unfortunately they have the mining limiter on them. So that kind of sucks. If you use LOL miner, you're able to push them maybe to like 30-ish. It really depends. Um, so I am currently mining Ethereum on them just for now, but this rig eventually is gonna be a complete Ravencoin rig. And I'll make a video about that later. We'll talk about why Ravencoin and things like that. But for now, it's mining Ethereum. It's actually more profitable, even with the limiters on both the 3070 Ti and the 3060 to mine Ethereum instead of Ravencoin, which it wasn't the case about a month or two ago, but it's currently the case. So that's what I'm doing as this is a for-profit uh, adventure that we're going on. So this 3080 is getting about 40-ish mega hash. And this, this might be off. This might be off compared to what you're actually getting because these are just the numbers that I remember. So I'm sorry if I'm skewing these, but I think this is getting about 40 mega hash on Ravencoin. Um, I ran Ravencoin for about two days on this entire rig just to see and test profitability. So I was getting about 40, 45. 
the 3070 Ti actually was getting like 35 to 40, depending on the settings I tried. The 3060 Ti's I believe were getting like 30-ish also. Um, so between these two, the 3060 Ti is actually more efficient than the 3070 Ti. Uh, but the 3070 Ti is basically like a 3080 in terms of raw performance for Ravencoin. These 3060s are pretty great at Ravencoin. If I overclock them enough, I can get 25 mega hashes out of them each. So considering how cheap a 3060 is supposed to be, that's the better deal. However, these 3060 Ti's I was actually able to get cheaper than these Asus Strix 3060's and that's because Nvidia does not make a Founders Edition for the 3060's. So all the AIB or added board partners add their own things to it, especially the Strix Edition. There's a tough version that's a little bit cheaper, but the Strix Edition is more of their ultimate card. And so it has a higher price. And unfortunately with tariffs and things like that, I think those cards were like $550 which the 3060 Ti's are 399 MSRP for these Founders, and that's the only reason I'm using Founders cards. The Founders cards run way hot, um, but they're way cheaper and helps with the ROI. So that's basically the rig here. Here are the two breakout boards that I am using. I also forgot to mention, but this has a on and off button um, that is very handy. I know some of the other power supplies have an on and off button, but this one is actually bigger and because it powers on the motherboard, it's very convenient. This case also did come with a power button. It's over here. It's a little power button, but I have everything set to auto reboot as I showed in my previous mining video, and so I don't ever need to use it. I do have a wireless mouse adapter plugged in because I was testing some things. On this rig, I am using HiveOS. I have it on a little drive here. And then I'm also using one of these adapters for Wi-Fi. Uh, all my rigs are on their own Wi-Fi. That way I don't have to run ethernet cords all around this uh, place. So this is the rig that I just built in the future, I will show you the 3070 Ti performance and things like that. Um, I'm using the UBIT risers for this also. You can find them on Amazon. I believe the price has actually come down on them a bit since profitability came down. Um, but yeah, this is this is my new rig. Oh yeah, the uh, I forgot to mention the processor that I'm using is the Ryzen 3 3200G and it has 16 PCI lanes. So I don't have to do any tinkering around to get all the graphics cards to show up. So that's really nice. Um, technically, I think you're able to get up to 16 graphics cards since there's 16 lanes, but I'm never planning to do that many with one of these Ryzen 3s. Eight's gonna be the max, as eight is the maximum amount of cards that you can fit in here. But uh, yeah, so let me know what you guys think about this rig. Uh, do you prefer this style case compared to my previous video's case? This thing's about $100 compared to the $30 thing you can get at Best Buy, the $30 rack. But it does provide stackability and it's a little more dense. It's more horizontal than it is vertical uh, since the other one has the cards vertical. But yeah, let me, let me know what you guys think about this and uh, we'll see you in the next one.